people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Father Ed Udovic, and I'm a retired faculty member for DePaul of Incension, and I'm helping out here um, more regularly at St. Teresa's since Father Frank is on sabbatical. This is my sixth Christmas Mass <laughs> at, three at three different parishes, so I was very happy to show up at the right time at the right parish. <laughs> Believe me, because there's been times where I've showed up at the wrong parish at the wrong time. So. Our Christmas praise begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we begin with a prayer of thanksgiving, thanking God for the gift of mercy, for the gift of forgiveness, for the gift of his love. Lord Jesus, you have the gift of God's love to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the gift of God's grace to us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the gift of God's forgiveness to us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. See amid the winter snow, born for us on earth below. See the tender lamb appears, promised from eternal years. Hail thou ever blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn. Sing through all Jerusalem, Christ is born in Bethlehem. 
Say, ye holy shepherds, shepherds, say, what your joyful news today. Wherefore have ye left your sheep on the lowly mountain steep? Hail, thou ever blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn. Sing through all Jerusalem, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has barred his holy arm in the sight of all nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these days he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things and through whom he created this universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high. 
as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn unto the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this event which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Once they saw, they understood what had been told them concerning this child. All who heard of it were astonished at the report given them by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen in accord with what had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is the perfect gift? The perfect gift is something that we need, something that we want, something that we like, perhaps even something we need, want, and like. The perfect gift can only be given to us by someone who knows us very well. Because only someone who knows us very well, a family member or a close friend or a, or a close colleague, they know us very well because, again, they see us all the time. They know what we like, what we don't like. And so, again, they, know, they have a knowledge of us. And so, again, they have a good idea of what we need or what we want or what we like. And so only a person like that can give us the perfect gift. Now, someone who doesn't know us can end up giving us a perfect gift, but it's like winning the lottery. It's just total chance. The perfect gift is given to us by someone who knows us. The perfect gift is given to us because it is something we like, something we want, something we need. This past week, I got three early Christmas presents from for old friends. The first one was three liters of imported Italian olive oil. Now, why was that the perfect gift? Well, it was a perfect gift because I'm a foodie. It's the perfect gift because I'm a very good cook. And so, I, and again, this stuff was, I would never have afforded, you know, I'm Trader Joe's uh, olive oil. And so the first thing I did at, when I got home that night, I went to um, Whole Foods, I got the best tomatoes I could buy, I got the best basil I could buy, I got the best buffalo mozzarella I could buy, and made a caprese salad, and just took a taste and said, oh, it's so good. That is so perfect. Next present I got was a new biography of, in French, of Cardinal Richelieu. Now you might say, oh God, how boring, is ever a Christmas present? But I'm a French historian, and I taught French history uh, all, in all my career. And I've been waiting for this book, it's by a renowned scholar, I've been waiting for this book to be published for two years. And so I got, I got home, I sat down in my chair and started to read it, and I couldn't put it down. Now, I don't, know, I don't think any of you can imagine not being able to put down a biography of Cardinal Richelieu, but that's because I'm a history nerd. And just as I started to read, I said, gosh, this is a good book. This is a good book. The final perfect gift I got, uh, again, from a, a former colleague at, week, at work, 
No, for many years I was an administrator to Paul, and every Friday night I would go home, and at five o'clock, to reward myself of having survived another week of endless, pointless, useless meetings, <laughs> I would pour myself a little bourbon over rocks. And that, that would be my treat for the end of the week. And so someone gave me a, a, a bottle of bourbon for, for Christmas. And it's, again, it's not the stuff I usually buy that I can afford. This was a, a bottle of bourbon that, you know, because I, I, I know how much it costs. Uh, I've gone to Binnie's. Uh, and I just could not, you know, it, it was more than I would, than would spend in, in probably a lifetime. But uh, so last night after the last mass, after my fourth mass, I went home. I said, oh, gosh, I, I was even too tired to eat. But first thing I did, you know, I just a couple of ice cubes in the, in the glass and just a little bit of bourbon. I sat in my easy chair. I just took a, a, a little sip and I said, oh, that's good. Three perfect presents. Now again, again, they were, they were perfect because they, I'm a foodie. I like my bourbon on the rocks, and I am a historian. So again, those, were the, all three of those were perfect gifts for me, given by people who knew they would be perfect gifts for me. Jesus Christ is the perfect gift for all of us. He is the perfect gift because he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows us inside out and upside down. He knows what we're capable of and what we're not capable of. He knows everything we've said and everything we will say, everything we've done or haven't done, and everything we will ever do or ever done. Ever done. So again, he knows us better than we could possibly know ourselves because then he knows us. He knows what's best for us, what the perfect gift for us is at any moment in our lives. And again, our lives are changing constantly. So what, what is the perfect gift at one moment is not going to be a perfect gift at the other moment. There are some moments in our life, and perhaps this moment, where the thing that we really need is love. If that's what we really need, that's what he gives us. If at that moment the perfect thing that we need is forgiveness, that's exactly what he gives us. If that moment the, first thing we need, the best thing we need is bravery, he gives us that. Again, whatever it is that we need at that moment in our lives, he gives it to us. The perfect gift. Now, every perfect gift is given with love. Every perfect gift is received with gratitude. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As always, we know that the gift of faith is also the gift to pray. The Father made Mary to be highly favored. Let us ask that the Church will share in Mary's holiness and humility. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Father promised that Mary's Son would have great dignity. Let us ask that the leaders of nations will promote human dignity and humility of all their people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Father revealed to Mary in many ways that God was close to her. Let us ask that people in every need, especially travelers, will know the saving presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Father made Mary the most blessed of women. 
Let us ask that the blessings of her faith and obedience for this assembly. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Father promised Mary that her son would sit upon the throne of David. Let us ask that those who have died will rejoice around this throne forever. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all victims of the violence in the city of Chicago. Hugo Galeado, Antonio Taylor, Alexis Rodriguez, Clarence Singleton, and Transit Campbell. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, for those for whom we have promised to pray, and for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, you promised us the gift of salvation and promised us the gift of, Messiah, of the Messiah. You have kept that promise with your gift of Jesus Christ, the gift that is, continues to be given to us and to all people for all times and for all ages. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that this our Christmas sacrifice may be made acceptable and pleasing to God, who is our loving creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good all of the church. Sacred infant, all divine, what a tender love was thine, thus to come from highest bliss down to such a world as this. Hail thou the blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn, singing through all Jerusalem, Christ is born. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gain for you as holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion. So as to break the bonds of death and the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
in your mercy and in your love for us, keep us always free from sin. Protect us and all those whom we know and love from all anxiety and despair in our lives, as we together wait to join the hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look now, not on our sins, not on the faith and love that fills our lives. Grant to us the peace, the unity, the justice, the joy of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share with one another some sound Christ. Peace.
We echo the prayer, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem, amen. I was just thinking, last Christmas, as you recall, it was 10 below zero, <laughs> and I had frostbitten fig uh, fingers. Uh, I think all things being equal, I prefer, prefer a balmy Christmas to a white Christmas. Uh, on behalf, uh, first of all, Father Frank sends his Christmas greetings. He's enjoying his sabbatical immensely, uh, as, as well he should. Uh, let me also, on behalf of all the parish staff, wish you and your families a most blessed Christmas and a happy new year. As you know, next, uh, began because of the craziness of the, of the, of the liturgical calendar this year. Um, so next Sunday, is the Feast of the Holy Family, and uh, Monday is the uh, Feast of Mary, the Mother of God. So we're gonna combine those on Sunday, and, and they'll count for both. You know, <laughs> God takes care of it. So uh, next, next Sunday, we will have the usual 10, noon, and 6 p.m. masses. Okay, thank you. Uh, please join me in th thanking our wonderful musicians, as always. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's go in Christmas peace. Thanks be to God. Just 